We got this side. All right. <clears throat> okay, start from the top though. Start from yeah. the top. Yeah. All right. Behind the hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Corey Spivey here of the Jackson Street Church of Christ. This is Mark Casellas with the Green Meadow Church of Christ. Behind the Pulpit is going to serve as a way of you being able to go behind the scenes of what goes on in the day-to-day -day life of a preacher, where you can see what goes on in the mind of the preacher after he leaves the pulpit and after he leaves the church doors, mm -hmm. where you can see exactly what goes on in our lives day-to-day -day when people can't judge us, when people don't know us. And so as we think about going behind the pulpit, I ask the question, who is Marie Casellas? Man, Corey, I tell you, I always struggle with this question, man, yeah. uh, really. And I don't know if it's because I'm still trying to grow into who God would have me to be. But I usually, I tell people when you think of Marie, because you think of a man who, number one, loves God, uh, loves the Lord with, with everything in me. Uh, my family loves ministry. Um, it's it's what I live for. Uh, and it's, it's what I just what I always yearn to do. So um, I'm grateful, grateful to be here, man, and grateful for Behind the Pulpit and looking forward to uh, everything that you all are going to learn when it talks about Behind the Pulpit. So with that being said, I uh, want to know who, who my boy Corey is. Man, that's, that's another thing that I even struggle with, um, as people think. And, and of course, there's, there's always these things that people like to throw uh, these facades and these ideas of who who the minister is, and you can't really know yeah. uh, when he's when uh, they're in the pulpit. But but I'm a guy who loves to communicate first and foremost. Yeah, um, I, I love to get concepts across. Uh, I love to make the connections in people's minds. That yeah. that light bulb moment that you see uh, on cartoons or TV shows when when that light bulb goes off in people's heads. That those are the things that I live for. It's not the accolades. It's it's not people looking up. Yeah. Uh, up to me and, and admiring me. It's really making those connections in people's minds. I, I love helping people solve the problems that they have going on in their lives. Um, I just yeah. love knowledge. And, yeah, and I think we, sure. we, we both, you know, got that uh, when we met at the at the National School of Preaching. Yeah, uh, there just has to be this love of knowledge that goes there and this love of of learning. And I just like to with that knowledge, make people feel good about themselves, whether it's with the word whether it's with comedy, a smile, yeah. whatever it can be. Yeah, for sure. Those are just ways that I get in. But even outside the pulpit, I'm a guy, and we talk sports all the time, yeah. right? Yeah. Just as much as we talk Bible, uh, I, I love cars, love fashion, as y'all can see how, how we dripped up today. But, I mean, there's just, <laughs> just there's so much yeah. uh, that, that, that people don't even know about me. And, and that's just the, the half of, not even a half of some of the things yeah. uh, about who we are, man. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I, I'll say to that, um, Corey, uh, he mentions talking about, you know, communicating the word in such a way where uh, people get an understanding. Um, you know, I often hear this thing that I've, older preachers often say is that uh, not only are we are we preachers, but some people say we're also ca cardiologists. We're mm -hmm. trying to reach the yeah. heart. We're trying to change the heart with the gospel. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's what we do. Uh, but speaking of that, uh, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of people don't understand what goes on uh, and and like the what ministry stands for and why we do this. So I want to ask you, Corey, man, why did you start preaching? Well, I, I think, and, and that, that's, a, again, a, a, a complex question that can go down a, a bunch of different avenues. But, but yeah. for the sake of time, like, the it goes back again to, to who, who I am. I yeah. love to communicate. Uh, I love knowledge. And, and that's what the word is all about. And so the reason I got into preaching, um, you know, my father father was a preacher. And yeah. so I would see him uh, in that in that example of, of, of sharing the word. But I also got the teaching because I noticed that a lot of the teaching in the Bible, a lot of the preaching was number one flawed. Yeah. Uh, and I began to notice that as we began to go to school, especially during the pandemic, yeah. as I began to sit with the word and with the spirit and with God by myself, I began to notice that one plus one wasn't always two. Yeah. Right. One plus one sometimes in a lot of church buildings was three, four, five or six. And I was wondering the math ain't nothing. Like, so yeah. I, yeah. so as I began to sit down by myself and nobody was, was able to interfere with, with my own study and my own understanding, again, I began to see that certain things didn't add up. Yeah. So yeah. number one, I, I saw that there was, there was a need to solve a problem of, of flawed communication yeah. and flawed doctrine. Yeah. But number two, I think where most churches and most preachers had found themselves is even when the, when the doctrine was pure, even when the doctrine was true, when people were in the pulpit, when people were in classrooms, number two, the doctrine was, was often too complex or was irrelevant in the delivery. Yeah. yeah. And so I would be sitting in church buildings 
sitting in classrooms where I was listening to real life information that, that aligned with the scriptures, but, but it didn't make sense. Yeah. I didn't understand yeah. it. It wasn't relatable. I couldn't apply it to my life. Like there, there were so many deep concepts. And so it seemed like what a lot of people were doing in the pulpit was deep sea diving into the word. Mm. And then it was like, I, I, I'm, mm. my, my thing is to show people how, how theological and philosophical I am. And so from the pulpit, they would seem like to dive off into the deep yeah. of the word and yeah. kind of scream from the bottom. Like, hey, everybody come down here. Yeah. And, and I was kind of like, this, this, this is not what preaching and teaching yeah. is supposed to sure. be about. Sure. And so even though we both, like we said, we love the knowledge of the word, what I wanted to do was, was also deep dive yeah. into the water, but, sure. but not call people down. What I wanted to do <clears throat> was go down to the deep seas of the word, yeah. gather as much as I can and swim back up top yeah. yes, and then sir. make it yes, simple sir. to everybody else. And so yeah. that's, that's yes, kind of why I got into it. Yeah. Um, and, oh, and man, yeah, that's, that's, that's a, that's a word. Uh, <laughs> that's a word, man. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and thinking, thinking about that, um, you know, when we look at when we look at Paul's letters, man, when, and you talk about not only being theological and philosophical, yeah. but one thing Paul always made sure mm -hmm. was that he taught people how to live up to this standard. So yeah. although he might have entered into his books or into his treaties with the with theology, it mm -hmm. always ended practically. Right. Um, you know, in that book of Ephesians, Galatians, you see that clearest day, chapters one through four. Uh, he's he's very theological, but he makes sure uh, at the end to give a practical way right. of how to live, how to live out this Christianity. Exactly. Uh, you know, not only, a you know, a gospel that talks, but a gospel, a gospel that walks. Um, but, man, I, I really appreciate that I, I too started preaching. Um, my uncle was uh, a minister, and and he would take us to church every every Sunday. Uh, we were there uh, all day long, uh, but it it was good, and I thank God for it. But um, he would get. We did youth days and youth Sundays every fourth Sunday, yep. and um, we it was it was awesome. My cousins and I, and I was the only one that it really um, stuck with, you know. And so I preached my first sermon at sixteen, man. Uh, 16 and uh, man, I was, I, I tell you, it was probably about five minutes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was probably, about, I, I had a manuscript, yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, I read word for word. Right. Uh, it was literally a five minute sermon. Uh, yeah. but, uh, I'll never forget it. it. It was awesome. It was the start of my journey. Um, and ever since then, um, I knew I wanted to preach. That was just this zeal, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that Jeremiah zeal yeah. that even went, you know, I, I just can't help but to preach. It's like fire in my bones. So um, that's why I started, man. And ever since, this is where uh, this is where I've been, and I wouldn't trade it for the world, man. Wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, but not only that, man. With with that with that being being said, man. As we uh, get ready to conclude here, when all is said and done, uh, and this is a I mean a real question, man. When all is said and done, what do you wish for people to remember about you and your ministry? If I mean in a perfect world, I mean finance is not a problem. You know, I mean school's not a problem. Church issues. I mean, in a perfect world, at the end of the day, when your journey is complete, yeah. when it's all said and done, what do you want people to remember about Corpus Bible? Yeah, that 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 is a loaded question, man. And you know, we don't we don't have enough time to yeah. really get. I think either one of us. But but I I I'd say two things. If I was forced to to really consolidate, mm -hmm. there would be two things I want to be remembered by. And I think the the number one thing and the most important thing that I want to be remembered as uh, as a preacher is that that practice what he preached. Yeah, for um, sure. Um, for you sure. know the it's the Jesus principle of, of literally bringing the word to flesh. Yeah, absolutely. Um, of, you know, yeah, being able to stand in front of a, you know, a, a, a crowd and be able to rock the mic and, and, you know, quote scriptures and, and, and pull pieces of, of, of text, you know, apart and make people yeah. understand it. You know, the, those are great things. And those are things sure. that, that, that come with great blessing. But at the end of my life, I want people when they're standing over me in my, in my casket, to, to say, man, you know, he was a great preacher, but he was yeah. an even better man. Of yes, sir. I, I, yes, I, I, I want That's that it. to be the main yes, thing. Yes, sir. Uh, but number two, one of these things, and, and, and I just thought about this. I have been praying to to consolidate, you know, my my vision of ministry down to one sentence. Yeah. And, and I finally got it there by the grace of God. And now sometimes I'm even afraid to say it, yeah. but, I, but I'm going to say it boldly. Okay, yeah. is that all right? Yeah. The second thing I want to be remembered as, I want to be remembered. As and I and I, I don't I don't want to take anything away from him. Please don't don't take that from from this statement. Yeah, I want to be remembered as the MLK of religion. 
Oh, I really do. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, yes, in preaching. Yes, in speaking. But most importantly, I, I want to use his most famous um, piece of literature, his his most famous speech that he that he ever gave, yeah. which was "I Have a Dream." Yeah. And what my dream is is for when all is said and done, that that he had a dream that 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 black men and and white men, yeah, black sure. kids and white kids could join hands. Yeah. What I have a dream of is that every member of not only the body of Christ, but members of the Baptist, members of the Methodist, members yeah. of, 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 of Hinduism, of Judaism, of Buddhism yeah. can all put aside our differences. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, 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 and seek to understand each other, seek to abide with one another, seek to serve God together. Yeah. My, at the end of my life, I don't want to be the guy who continue to discriminate religiously. Yeah. I yeah. want to be the guy, like one of the guys who, who put everything aside and said, you know what, let's come together. Let's grab hands yeah. and, and let's work. That's work in the kingdom of God. That's yeah, that's yeah. that's really what yeah, I want, man. I feel it. That's feel really it. what I want. Um, yeah, uh, that's but good. Enough about me. <laughs> when all is said and done with you in a perfect world, what what is what do you want to be remembered for in ministry, man? Man, uh, I tell you, I, I can't top that, dog. I can't, I can't top that. Um, uh, man, I, but I, I I concur, man. Uh, at the end of the day. Um, I want people to know, similar to what you said, and one thing I always I always say to people is I want to be like the Bible says about Enoch, mm -hmm. that he walked with God. Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's the key. That he walked with God. Because at the end of the day, I want the pulpit's gonna end. Yeah. Ministry's gonna end. I, I, mm -hmm. you know, people are gonna come, we're gonna get put out, yeah. people are gonna come behind. That that's all gonna end. And at the end of the day, I want my wife mm -hmm. to know. That he walked with God. Yeah. I want my ch future children to know that he walked with God. I want I want the members of the congregation that that the Lord blessed me to to shepherd and to lead. I want them to know yeah. that he walked with God. Yeah. Um, that's it. Um, and and I'm sure um, everyone wants to finish their journey like Paul. Um, that the time of my departure said, "I fought the good fight, yeah. kept the faith, I finished my course." Uh, and there's a crown of righteousness laid up in store for me. Um, and I believe that. Yeah. And I know that if, if we keep walking with God, mm -hmm. uh, if that if that remains our focus, if if God remains the center of our ministry, yeah. I believe we can accomplish that, Doc. Absolutely. And I believe that people will remember and know mm -hmm. that Corey Spivey, Marika Salas, and, and many others out there uh, walked with God and continue to be faithful to God until the end. Yeah. Yeah. That's the key, man. Yeah. That's the key, man. I mean, you talking about not topping that. It's just, you know, it's not a, about we we've never been in competition <laughs> with each other. Ever, never, man. Since we first this, met. This but, never, man. This is my dude. This is my dude. That'll preach, man. This is my dude. Preaching from your life. Um listen, we we appreciate you all for joining us uh in this pilot episode as we just we've just scratched the surface yeah. of yeah. what ministry is about, of, of what even is is merely behind the pulpit. Yeah. Uh, but we hope that this first episode has has served uh, as a great segue, a great introduction uh, to the front doors of our yeah. lives. And we pray that, that you will continue to tune in uh, as, as, as we begin uh, to not only converse with one another, but as yeah. we begin to bring ministers from all over the world in yeah. ministry together here on Behind the, the Pulpit. Pulpit. Thank you. Have a good one. I look up tight. I do too. I'm trying to get loose. Shoulders be up to my ears. <laughs>